What's going on everyone? Welcome to part 5 of our Keyshot Essential series. My name's Kareem Merchant, and in this video, I'll be covering the basics of lighting your Keyshot scenes. Whether it's an artifact in a museum, a marker rendering, or the latest and greatest tech gadget ad to hit the streets, creating appealing and dramatic lighting can help add a level of emotion that draws the viewer in. Not only does light allow you to see an object clearly, but it also provides an easy way to bring details into the foreground and accent design elements. There is a lot to learn about the art of lighting, but let's get started with the basic lighting options in Keyshot. The first thing we're going to discuss is how to use the lighting tab. If you're looking at the real-time view, you'll notice that the scene already has lighting applied to it. This is the default studio lighting Keyshot uses for all new projects. To adjust how the light affects your scene, the first place you'll want to go is the Lighting tab, which you'll find in the Project panel on the right. Here you'll find a series of controllable parameter groups that will affect how light is processed in your scene. At the top, we have our Lighting Presets. You can think of these as a give-and-take relationship between speed and accuracy. The topmost option, Performance Mode, will give you the greatest render speed with the least amount of lighting accuracy, which is highly noticeable as you can see here. Something to note about performance mode is that it only works in the real-time view. If you were to output a render with the performance mode preset toggled on, Keyshot would automatically output it in basic mode. Basic will act as the fastest render mode that you can output, because all lighting effects other than self-shadows will be toggled off, and the shadow quality and ray bounces will be set low. I'll further elaborate on those settings in a moment here. In contrast, Jewelry mode, located towards the bottom of the list, will generate the most realistic and accurate lighting, but will be the slowest render mode due to the fact that all lighting effects have been toggled on and shadow quality and ray bounces have been increased. The lighting presets list also offers a product and interior mode that progressively toggle more settings on as you travel down the list. For a full explanation of what options are turned on and off, please reference the Keyshot manual online. Finally, at the bottom, we have a custom mode. This mode will be automatically toggled on if changes are made to any one of the existing parameters. This is also where advanced users can save and apply custom presets that they've created. Under lighting presets, we have our environment lighting accordion. Here is where you can control shadow information and ground illumination. Shadow quality will control the level to which Keyshot will perfect ground shadows and object shadows, while the ground illumination and self-shadows checkboxes will determine which of those effects is being applied. A little quick tip here is that most parameters in Keyshot will provide a tooltip that is displayed by hovering your mouse over the given parameter. If you're ever curious about what a parameter does or controls, simply hover over to get a brief description. Below that, we have the general lighting accordion, which acts similarly to environment lighting. At the top is the Ray Bounces slider, which controls the amount of times a light bounces around your scene. Below that, we have the Global Illumination and Caustics checkboxes, which toggle each light bouncing effect on or off. Global Illumination adds more realistic lighting to a scene by taking into account not only the light that comes directly from a light source, also known as direct illumination, but also light rays that are reflected by other surfaces in the scene, whether reflected or not. This is known as indirect illumination, which you can see here. Caustics, for those not familiar with the term, is a common situation with lighting best exemplified when you see light shining through a drinking glass. The glass itself casts a shadow, but glass also produces a curved region of bright light as shown in the image on your screen. Finally, the last section of the lighting tab is the rendering technique accordion. Here you can choose between product and interior render modes, which will optimize lighting based on your scene. If you're rendering a single object, product mode will more efficiently calculate light on a specific point, versus interior mode, which is optimized for calculating scattered and bounced light through an interior. The next thing I'd like to quickly touch on are Keyshot HDRIs. As I mentioned near the beginning of the video, on Startup, Keyshot uses an HDRI to light your scenes by default. The Startup HDRI, along with several other preloaded HDRIs, can be found in the Library panel under the Environments tab. Here you'll find several options for different scenarios that can be drag and dropped into your scene. 
HDRIs can be further controlled and customized under the Environments tab in the Project panel, but many times you can achieve desirable results quickly by dropping in different lighting environments and picking one that fits your scene best. I'll be covering more about HDRI environments in our next Keyshot Essentials episode, so definitely tune into that to learn more. The last thing I'd like to introduce you to in this video are lighting materials. Keyshot offers a variety of preset lighting materials under the Library Panel Materials tab. Here you can find drag and drop lighting materials that range from spotlights to emissive lighting that can be used to add an increased level of realism in your scenes. Each light works best under different circumstances. For example, emissive lighting does not project light, but works particularly well for mimicking the glow of illuminated LEDs. Emissive lights are also a great way to make detail elements such as the illuminator on my security camera more visible. Even though these illuminators do not glow visibly in reality, by adding an emissive, I was able to bring more attention to them while hinting at their actual function. You can see how by changing the intensity of my assigned emissive, I can make the somewhat hidden details far more visible. Advanced users can also use IES lights, area lights, and spotlights to create highly realistic scene lighting. These lights are created by modifying geometry into light via the Materials tab, giving users very accurate control over light attributes such as wattage and are used to create things such as headlights and wall sconces, as well as offer highly flexible scene lighting that can replace or augment your HDRI. You can get started lighting your scenes with these lighting basics, but for more great content on using physical lights on your projects, check out our advanced lighting episode where Ryan Levy dives deeper into using physical lights to light your objects and scenes. Thanks for watching the fifth part of our Keyshot Essential series. In part six, we'll learn more about implementing, acquiring, and controlling lighting environments in your Keyshot scenes. Don't forget to let us know your thoughts on this tutorial in the comment section below, and if you found this video useful, Give it a like and share with your friends.